Hey there, Sports History fans. Arnie Chapman here from the Sports History Network to share with you an awesome announcement. Now dig on this. Four of our amazing podcasts have clinched spots in the final round of the Sports Podcast Awards, and we need your support to take home the trophy. First up, we've got Basketball History 101 driving the lane in the best basketball category. Then on deck, we've got Orville Mulligan Sports Writer. He's cracking up the competition in the best sports comedy category. Marty's Illegal Stick is dominating the ice next in the best hockey category. And last but not least, we have Wrestling with Heels on powerbombing its way to victory in the best wrestling category. Now, again, we're counting on you to cast your vote and help out these incredible podcasters secure their well-deserved recognition. It's super easy. All you got to do is head over to the dedicated landing page. That's at sportshistorynetwork.com forward slash vote. Again, that's sportshistorynetwork.com forward slash vote. Now, let's take another look at sports yesteryear with this episode brought to you by, of course, the Sports History Network. And we'd like to welcome everybody back to the Football's Family Podcast. I am sitting in my office today looking out at an ice fill parking lot. And Tennessee, you know, this is where I am, Middle Tennessee, among other states in the Union, uh, came under major snow. Now, maybe you're listening to this and had more. We had about six to eight inches here in Tennessee, and that shut us down. It is... Uh, it's not normal that we get this type of snow. And in fact, uh, we do get it from time to time, but I don't remember anything like this since like 1994. It's insane how much snow it is right now. And it's cold. Right now I'm looking at about seven or eight degrees, if not about 15, but the wind chill is a little bit colder. Uh, tonight it will be down to about seven or eight. So it's going to be cold and uh, just, you know, if you're in Tennessee right now, you understand parts of the South, especially I'm looking at pictures from Baltimore and I, I'm seeing people in the snow, but up in Buffalo, good gracious, y'all a hearty bunch. Uh, I love seeing the community come together to help dig the, the stadium out from underneath the snow. But even then, if there's snow on the ground, I know Buffalo fans would be there. And I really, really are pulling for Buffalo in this game, not just because of the Chiefs, because last week, I have no problem with the Chiefs, but I want to tell you this. Last week when I saw uh, the game and I heard people singing Taylor Swift songs in the middle of a football game, I had a problem with that. And I, and I talked to my wife and I said, this is not football. This is pop music, and there's got to be a separation of the two during the game. I'm thinking about the old school NFL films music by Sam Spence. That's what I'm thinking of. And that's what I prefer because that's football. And you may like Taylor Swift and that's fine. I don't have any issues with that, but keep Taylor Swift music out of football. Please just do that. My daughters, my daughters, both of them love Taylor Swift and we listen to it all the time. Uh, well, they do. I've had my AirPods in listening to Dave Matthews band, but you know, it's not during a football game. That's fine. Uh, but we're going to talk about the playoffs here in a minute. But uh, just stay warm the best you can. And, and the weather's changing. So hopefully next couple of days we'll have a little bit better weather. I tried to get out of my parking lot in my driveway Tuesday and Wednesday. Tuesday we got out and I slid all over the place. Uh, yesterday or Wednesday we tried to get out. Couldn't even make it out of our driveway. So I'm not doing that till I can at least see the ground beyond the ice. <clears throat> but there's a couple of things that came up. And I've, uh, I want to talk about real quick. I meant to do it earlier, but again, the weather and everything just got in the way. Uh, the coaching changes. Maybe your team experienced coaching changes. And I'm, I'm really just looking at how the coaching changes have affected not only my team, but yours as well. Uh, Oakland or the Oakland Raiders, the Los Angeles Raiders. I am very happy that y'all picked Antonio Pierce to be your coach. I think you've got a really good coach there that will not only uh, return the team, probably like a Dan Campbell, who's doing an amazing job up in Detroit, but also turn your team around uh, moral, uh, morale wise, I should say, morale wise. Uh, to me, he is a motivator. He is a good coach. Uh, he was a good defenseman when he played. But I really think y'all made the right decision by keeping him. 
Uh, he's probably a little bit cheaper on the money for for Mark Davis than Josh McDaniels, and uh, they're still playing paying John Gruden for several more years. Uh, that may be motivating factor, but I think they're going to start winning, and they got to do something because Kansas City owns the West. They just do. And for you as the Oakland Raiders to even think, or Oakland again, sorry, Las Vegas Raiders to even think about winning the West, you have to crack that motif. You have to, you have to destroy uh, that that image of being almost invincible for the Chiefs. And all in order to do that, you have to find a way to beat them not just one time a year, but you got to beat them twice. Now the last game they played against the Raiders. Uh, the Raiders defense went nuts and I'm so happy to see that because I think the Raiders, I, I love seeing the Raiders be good because it's something like from the seventies and eighties that I, I really enjoy that history of, of NFL. The Raiders are good. Steelers are typically good. I, I like that. That's something cool to me, but the Raiders, I think you've got a good one in, in that. Uh, I'm looking at my Titans. I still don't understand why, well, I know the reason why uh, that Mike Vrabel was fired or let go. I don't understand why they did it. Uh, the last two years have not been good for, for us, but it's not so much on Vrabel as it is on Robinson getting the team that he did a few years. I mean, when you trade A.J. Brown, A.J. Brown is is a little bit of a diva, but he is probably the best player that we would have on the team outside of Derrick Henry. Uh, but – getting rid of a coach who had to deal with two seasons of injuries. And even the season we won uh, and got first place in the AFC and got bounced by the Bengals, we still had so many injuries that people gave him coach of the year simply because of what he did injury-wise. Now, other things were, were part of it as well. Uh, I think he's going to be picked up pretty quickly. I think a team would look at him and think they, they shouldn't have let him go the way they did. I think he'll be fine wherever he lands. He is a good coach. He is a motivator, a man, and he uh, he just didn't have much to work with for the past two years. Now that being said, I think Will Levis is good, and I and I do believe they're going to re resign Derrick Henry. He won't make sixty four million dollars like he did over his contract, but I believe they're going to keep him for maybe two or three more years. Ryan Tannehill's gone. I, I believe that they're going to clear house on a lot of things. Jeffrey Simmons will still be there, I believe. Uh, we're going to have to draft another offensive lineman or two and uh, probably get a wide receiver, maybe free agency, because we got about $75 million in cap. We're going to have to do that. I'd like to see them maybe even talk to Philadelphia about getting A.J. back. Doubt that will happen, but, you know, I can uh, a boy can dream, Kenny. So that's one of them. Seattle. Uh, Seattle, uh, Pete Carroll, what, 72? Yeah, he's 72 in – I think he is probably the best coach that y'all have had. Uh, you've had some good ones. Don't get me wrong, but I think he's the best coach that you had. He, the last couple, uh, last couple of years or three years, they say right here from uh, ESPN.com that he went 25 and 26. So, yeah, he struggled. Uh, I think with Gino, he got a quarterback that he could build around for a few years. Uh I like that they kept him on as an advisor, whatever that means. I don't know. But to me, Pete Carroll's a great coach. Probably not a Hall of Famer. But if you take his US, <clears throat> excuse me, if you take his USC numbers together with his Seattle numbers and and kind of avoid his uh, Patriots and Jets numbers, I think he would be a pretty a pretty good uh consideration for uh you know for the Hall of Fame. Uh, but they're not going to do that, and that's fine too. Uh, but Pete Carroll is one, and I think his going to going to Seattle will be one of those jobs that will have a little bit of uh, stink to it in a way because of the last uh, this year, and it will have some challenges. But to me, you will look at this as a job with potential because there's some pieces in place in Seattle. Uh, you fans up in Seattle are just rabid for your team, Seahawks, and you have every right to. Uh, so Seattle would be one of those jobs. The the Commanders. Uh, I liked Ron Rivera, but I got why he had to be let go. Uh, I think he was put in a bad situation. Dan Snyder is absolutely the worst 
owner in the history of the NFL, and there have been pretty bad ones. Uh, I think with the new ownership group, you have a good chance of turning things around, but you need a new stadium. You need a new culture. You need a guy who, and whoever he is, I don't, I don't know who he is. Um, I think you need a new, a new person to not only motivate men, but discipline men in the way you need a new quarterback. Sam Howell, I liked him this year was not a good year for him. Do you trust him for the next five, six years, or do you give him, uh, or do you use him as your backup? <laughs> and, and I don't know which one that they will do, but my guess is uh, they're going to either look for a stopgap in free agency, or they'll draft somebody in the second or third round that could uh, eventually be maybe in first round, you know, I don't know, but if you're looking for uh, to fit a need, there might be some other needs in the first round that they could go after. So to me with, Sam Howell, do you keep him for another year knowing that your team is going to be bad and you can you can have a better draft pick? Or do you pick somebody this year, throw him into the fire, like a Peyton Manning, like a C.J. Stroud, and see what happens? And by the way, doesn't Houston just look amazing now getting rid of Deshaun Watson and picking up C.J. Stroud? That kid, C.J. Stroud, is not only a good guy, but my goodness, he's going to win the Offensive Rookie of the Year. Uh, he is just insanely good. And, you know, the team isn't that bad, but I think somebody like C.J. Stroud elevates Houston to another level, and that is respectful. Oh, that's respectable at all. Good gracious. Houston, you are blessed to have him. Uh, and Carolina, I like Bryce Young, but C.J. Stroud is the number one pick this year. And if you had thought that through – you would have gotten that. I do believe the owner kind of hamstrung them with that. But I think Bryce Young has the potential of being great. He's just in a bad spot. Frank Wright, speaking of Carolina, Frank Wright being fired the way they did, they they fired him. Uh, do you hire a guy for one year and give him a a team that he didn't want or wasn't for and say, this is your job, and then punish him for – he went 1-10 this year. His team is bad. Part of that ha he had nothing to do with. Also, part of it is uh, probably coaching, but it boils down to the fact that his team was not uh, put together correctly and, and, you know, Carolina cleaned house. So that's it. So if you're a, a coach looking at a team and you get two offers and one is Carolina, you take the other offer. This You, you find a rookie coach that – wants to get started, Carolina. You don't go after a proven coach. You go after a rookie coach who needs to get his foot in the door and maybe look for another job somewhere. Atlanta. Uh, Atlanta has a good playmaking group. I like Bijan. I like Drake. And I like Kyle Pitts. And it says here they have about $40 million in cap space. Arthur Smith, when he left the Titans, we kind of went downhill with play calling but in Atlanta he wasn't suited he was 20 and 30 21 to 30 Arthur Smith what do you do with that what do you do with that I think that with him uh with that team you have uh you have a, a an interesting dilemma uh what are you going to do as uh, uh, for you know what are you going to do for your quarterback uh what are you going to do for your defense and and Bijan, is he the main focus of your offense? Which I think he should be. He, I believe he has a potential of being, at, uh, you know, at Christian McCaffrey on that level. And he's not Christian McCaffrey, but you know what I'm talking about. He has a potential of being on that level because of his ability to catch and run. And, and he is just insanely fast. And that is part of, let's see, his durability. I think the quarterback is the big thing. Now, I'm hearing rumors, of course, they're looking at Bill Belichick. Now, Bill Belichick brings a whole world of differences that Arthur Smith didn't have. Bill Belichick has been around for a while, and, and, of course, I think he's won just a couple of Super Bowls, hadn't he? But people said it was because of Tom Brady. I mean, Tom Brady helped, but those two were combined at the hip. The moment he left to go to Tampa Bay, when they cut off that, that relationship, you could see kind of what happens. Now, would you want – the Atlanta job. I think the Atlanta job is an, is an impressive job. And I think it's, uh, 
possible that if a coach comes in and picks a quarterback that could just hold the clipboard and, and throw a pass right, and I, I still like Taylor Heineke, but that's okay. If you can find a quarterback that can do that, the NFC South is winnable for every team except for the Panthers right, Panthers right now. Tampa Bay won, but they had to use the last – last part of the season run to do it Atlanta was in it till close to the last game and and so was New Orleans and New Orleans fell apart because their car kind of fell apart and the defense didn't do great but you look at it this is one of the most winnable divisions there is then AFC South is the other one other than my Titans you look at what happened with the Colts and and the Texans those two went back to back to back in Jacksonville until they fell apart at the end of the year they had that division one I'm just glad that my Titans knocked them out this year like the Jags did us last year. Uh, but the NFC South, to me, is, is a very winnable division. you got three teams that can do that. So if you find the right guy who finds the right coach, or quarterback, and I believe Bill Belichick, if he's picked, will be that guy. Uh, just don't let him pick wide receivers. He's not good at that at all. Uh, but he could build a winning program down there. Now, how long he'll coach, I don't know. Uh, he's up in his 70s as well. He may want to do one more four or five years, and he could probably do it. Uh, but he also probably can groom somebody. Only problem is, do you really want somebody from the Bill Belichick uh, check coaching tree to coach your team? I don't know. The Chargers, uh, the Chargers are going to charge her. <laughs> and I just, I, I laugh at that every time I hear it. The Chargers are going to charge it, and, and that means that they're going to find ways to lose. But this team is one of those coaches, and I believe Vrabel could be their, their coach to be, but at the same time, um, there's a couple more that could be good. I don't know if I want to be working for Dean Spanos. I don't know if I want to be that guy. I think that being him uh, would be not at all – what I, being working for him would not be that good for me. Uh, I like Kellen Moore. They're talking here that Kellen Moore could be one of the guys. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. And I think that when you look at that team, you're going to find that Justin Herbert is the number one, uh, number one player that people would want to work with. He is insanely good. He's not a great subway spokesman. He's kind of, uh, wooden with that but <laughs> you pay him for his quarterback ability now I've heard as well Jim Harbaugh may be the guy uh, at the same time there's several more that could be the guy so it's up it's up to uh, you know it's up to Los Angeles to decide it's a good situation it's a good uh, it's a good market and I think part of it comes with how much do you are you willing to work with a guy like Dean Spanos? Of course, you know when we talk about it, Robert Kraft and in, in the New England Patriots, they have a a, a way of winning. Uh, Jared Mayo, I remember him playing; it was insanely good. Uh, I like the hire. I like the hire a lot. My problem with that is if you are the man replacing the man, you're not going to be there long. It's just in life, if you follow somebody who is a Hall of Famer or, you know, in, in the real world, not football world, if you follow a guy who is decent, you know, has been somewhere for a long time, you're not, you tend to not last long. I think he will be a good one. I think he'll be a good one. I remember watching, uh, I remember watching him play for Tennessee, for the Vols. He's a good one. And I think he's a motivator. A uh, man alongside Mike Vrabel, I think they're very similar in in, in their in their uh, build and the way that they communicate to people. Uh, I wish him the best. I think the division, the AFC East, is Buffalo's for a while. The Dolphins have a potential, and the Jets. You guys are amazing. The, the, your fans are amazing. The Jets are not good right now. They have good pieces, but they're just not good right now. Uh, New England is probably the fourth best team in the East right now. You're on Mayo, finding him a quarterback because you don't have one on your on your staff right now and in your team right now. Finding a quarterback that would be be good enough to uh to be good enough and not only to be good enough, but you will uh 
not you know it's just it's just funny to watch a team try to build around a subpar quarterback and it's not it's just not it's just not good and i think new england is in that situation so and and by the way um by the way when i look at probably the hardest person to follow is nick saban down in alabama I don't know how the coach from Washington, who's now the coach for the, uh, you know, for the Tide, I don't know how he's going to do it. I wish him well, but I think the AFC, the AFC, the SEC is now Georgia's for several more years. Uh, Georgia should have been in the playoffs, and I believe Florida State probably should have been in the playoffs this year. Alabama should not have, and I think Michigan is the best team in the in the uh, nation right now, but replacing Nick Saban in Alabama is probably on the same level as replacing Bear Bryant was down there. You just don't do it. So, you know, it's one of them things. Now, quickly, I'm looking at, uh, in fact, when I'm recording this, it's 349 Central Time. I'm missing the Houston Texans-Baltimore Ravens game. I don't know what I think about this game I don't know it because Houston is AFC South and I'm not necessarily going to root for them. Although today I am and not because I, I, I think Baltimore is probably the best team in the NFL right now. I just think that seeing, uh, seeing this team Houston do what they did this year and then do what they did last week. Uh, I like to see them continue. Do I think they're going to do I think they're going to win the Super Bowl? I don't know. I don't know. But I think that they're going to do do well. And this is just the beginning. I think this is just the beginning of what Houston could possibly do. Now, Baltimore, Baltimore has a just their team is stacked in the in the world of salary cap. I don't know uh how they do it. It's just an amazing thing. They got a good GM, they got a good staff. It's it's pretty cool to watch that. Uh, so that's going on right now. Later on today, Green Bay versus San Francisco. I'm a Brock Purdy fan. He is one of the lowest paid players in the NFL. That's going to change soon. I think they're going to win, and I think it's going to go away. It's just going to go away. That Green Bay, what y'all did last week, shocked me as among other people. But I think Jordan Love, you you probably hit your limit today with San Francisco, so I'm pulling for them. Uh, tomorrow, which is Sunday at this time, uh, you got you have two more games that we could think about. But I just want to leave it with with that game, with those two games today. Uh, I think Buffalo wins their game, and uh, I, I I like to see Buffalo, and I think Detroit wins their game. I like to see Buffalo and Detroit in the Super Bowl. At least one team could finally break a curse. Will that happen? I don't know. I don't know if Detroit wins tomorrow, but I like to see them win. I think Buffalo is going to win a, against Kansas City because Kansas City's got to go up to them. Uh, Detroit inside, it ought to be a, a good game. Detroit's very gritty, very good. Dan Campbell is a very good coach, so we'll, we'll see. But I hope everybody has a good day, and I hope everybody enjoys watching the games. And if you listen to this, just get a like and subscribe. And uh, – We'll be, pick up here again uh, next time. And if you would like to come on to the Football's Family Podcast, just send me a message at Jeremy underscore McFarland on Twitter, and we'll get you on. We'll talk about football. We'll talk about life, whatever you want to talk about. This is your show. Enjoy it. Thank you. Hey there, Sports History fan. This is Arnie Chapman, a.k.a. the Football History Dude, and I wanted to thank you for stopping by to listen to another episode here on the Sports History Network. Our podcasters are passionate about uncovering and sharing sports stories from yesteryear. And if you didn't know it already, we have over 30 shows across the network covering all sorts of sports history topics. In fact, here's a glimpse into one of our awesome podcasts here on the network. The Pigskin Tales podcast is all about the lesser known pro football players. Yes, there are stories about the ones we know, like Brad Tarkenton and Harold Red Green. But have you ever heard of Ernie Nevers? How about Dave Osborne or even Grady Alderman? 
These men created their own path to the NFL. How did they do it? Listen to the Pigskin Tales podcast. Now streaming on your favorite music platform. Go to pigskintales.com. How about that? I bet you're super hyped to go listen to that new podcast, right? Well, to learn about this show and all the other podcasts on the network, head over to sportshistorynetwork.com forward slash podcast. Again, that's sportshistorynetwork.com forward slash podcast. Head over there today to find your next favorite sports history podcast.